this question. I pulled this out because, um, so I keep saying this um, over and over, with oscillations and waves, you have to be able to fluidly move between kind of a question where you are not trying to recall any formulas, you are uh, coming up with a problem solving steps on your own, uh, on the spot, on the fly. There are questions like that. And there are questions you simply have to have a formula memorized. <laughs> so you don't know uh, without, this is where practice makes perfect. This is where if you've practiced enough, you've seen it enough, then you kind of learn to recognize which is what. Um, but until you've practiced, you kind of have to um, learn to flip back and forth. One where you are not looking for formulas, you're kind of just trying to understand the situation and come up with your own formulas for answering it. And there are questions where you, there's a key formula that you simply had to know. It, you read it when you're reading the textbook and you kind of recognize that's an important formula. You memorized it and having memorized it, you can just, uh, um, just to use it. So here we do this question, uh, which it is dealing with mass hanging from a spring. The formula you simply have to know, and this is not something that's easy to drive, unless you know, is this one. It gives you the, uh, the angular frequency or natural frequency of oscillation of a mass on spring. So that angular frequency of mass on spring is given by square root of spring constant over mass. That's a formula that um, you simply have to know. And um, in this particular question, it gets a little bit harder simply because it doesn't involve spring constant directly. But what you do have is that whatever this spring is, it's not changing. So whatever spring constant you have is the same spring constant. And um, you can form some kind of a ratio that will allow you to relate the mass you're starting out with, for which you are given period of, to if you want to change the period, then how should you change the mass? So, um, but uh, all of that, it, it's not possible to, uh, go through the remainder of this solution step unless you know this formula in the first place. You have to know that uh, the amount of mass on, a, mass on a spring is related to angular frequency um, and through angular frequency to frequency and period uh, by this square root relationship. You just have to know that. Um, oh, so let me write down, I guess, a couple more relationships just because you're given information in terms of period. So you need to know the angular frequency is related to frequency by a factor of two pi. This two pi is actually a converting unit from unit of cycles to unit of radians. But it's important, uh, although neither of them are strictly speaking actual units, that, that, that they are meaningful. That's why this two pi is here to tell you that uh, um, the radians per cycle, two pi radians per cycle. And uh, since they're giving you a period, you also have to relate period to frequency by one over F reciprocal or relating that to angular frequency. Um, in terms of angular frequency, this is two pi over angular frequency. So the information you are given here is, you are given mass um, M1, you are given period P1, and um, you want to see what, uh, what M2 should be, given uh, this new period, period two. So I guess, um, oh, so this is where you kind of to <laughs> switch over and um, try to think through the question and come up with some uh, um, kind of solution steps of your own. And this is the thought process that I would go through. 
So I know the question has something to do with the period. So I'm going to write down period. So the period is equal to um, 2 pi over angular frequency. Um, and right now here, there's nothing here that lets me solve this question. But once I have angular frequency, and this is why it's uh, important to have this memorized. Because once you have this memorized, then it's much easier to recall it. I can imagine putting this in to say uh, it, the period is given by 2 pi times square root of mass divided by spring constant. And this is where you might recognize, oh, I have spring constant. And that's the one thing that remains constant between one setup here and another setup here. That gives me a way to set up an equation using that constant. So I can take this expression here, period is that, solve it for the constant. So solving it for the spring constant k, this is what you'd get. k is equal to, I'm going to do this in my head, I'm going to fast. Uh, I'm, if I'm going to fast, stop me. But doing this in my head, this is what I get. Solving for spring constant, you get m, uh, you get 4 pi, squared times m divided by period squared. I kind of squared both sides, moved k to the left hand side, p over to the right hand side. So make sure that makes sense. Now I can label it as that's the spring constant given mass m1 and period 1. And actually, I guess using that I can solve what the spring constant is. The, now the thing is I don't have to because the question isn't asking me for spring constant. If I want to you know, not do any kind of unnecessary things, I don't actually have to solve for spring constant. All I have to do is recognize that this exact same relationship holds for this uh, second scenario. So that same spring constant is equal to 4 pi squared m2, how much mass is on the spring um, when you've changed the period, divided by p2 squared. And because these two equations have the same left-hand side, I can say that I can set it so that these two expressions are equal to each other, or the right hand is equal to each other. That's the quickest way to do it. Then I have 4 pi squared and 1 over p1 squared is equal to 4 pi squared and 2 over p2 squared. The biggest advantage here really is that it allows you to cancel out kind of common factors that might appear complicated. So I can solve this for M2 here. And when I do, this is what I get. M2 is equal to the ratio of the periods, P2 over P1 squared times M1. OK, um, let me plug in the numbers and just get the numbers first. And then I'll tell you why. That's not the answer. You have to do one more step. You probably, a lot of you see it already. So M1, 0 0.85 times, I can actually see the ratios that the ratio is uh, two to one. So the ratio is just two. Uh, so it's times two squared or four. So I get the answer of 3.4 kilograms here. Now, uh, 3.4 kilograms is not the answer because it's asking how much mass must be added. This M2 is the, the total mass uh, for the period two. So I have to subtract out the mass that's already there because the question is asking you for how much mass you have to add. So let me just uh, subtract 0 0.85, so 2.55. That should be the correct answer, let's say. Uh, let's check 2.55. So, okay. 
Yeah, so this is an example of a question where um, you simply have to know this formula. Now, if you go through your textbook and uh, look at where this uh, formula is coming from, it comes from the equation of motion, uh, which describes mathematically the oscillatory motion, simple harmonic oscillator motion. And I think I have lecture videos on that. And, and it's good for you to understand where it comes from. So do, do that. But once you've understood the, the second thing that is important is just having it memorized so that when you need it, it's easier to recall. 